Okay. Uh, as Cameron said, um, I've been hanging around Georgia for a while. I washed up on the shores of Georgia a number of years ago. And as a journalist, I sort of naturally gravitated to uh, the Pankisi Valley. I've got to show you a map because this is for some people in the audience and probably for an international audience who don't know where the Pankisi is. Uh, so I'm going to refer to the map a little bit, if you can look over there. Uh, the Pankisi Valley is a valley of Chechen kist, called Kists who live on the Georgian side of the Russian Federation there. Uh, on the northern side there is Chechnya. Now a number of years ago during the Chechen Wars, the valley was being used as a safe haven for fighters who were fighting uh, towards Grozny, which as Cameron said, Roddy Scott was killed during an operation there, and we set up a foundation. Now, the valley itself is, yeah, quite picturesque in its own way. Uh, it's quite poor. Uh, as I said, 15,000 Muslim minority there, the Kists. So we decided we wanted to do something economically for the place. And we thought English language lessons, that's pretty cool. And so we, set, we started there. There's our little school with the pink. Um, and we started with 45 children. And now we've got more than 200 children learning English. Uh, and then there's, the, there's some of our kids. And it's a pretty bulk standard English class. You know, it's got a blackboard teacher. Uh, it, it's got the students. And they do exactly what students do all over the world. And nothing's changed for the last 100 years. So we had the kids going there. And, um, then someone helped us out with the computer class. We started a computer class. And it's going fine. The computers are doing well. Uh, the IWA, the uh, Estonian Am ambassador, and the Dutch embassy gave us some stuff. And we started the classes. But I came back to the valley a while ago. And I noticed that the teachers, things had sort of peaked. Things weren't going really strongly. And one thing I noticed was the teachers who are all local, uh, everyone who runs this thing is a local from that valley. The only people who actually operate anything from outside is myself, the Scots, and volunteers like uh, Ellie Crammers, who is skiving off from Durham University here somewhere. Um, and uh, so there we are, you know, we, we, we got this going. And somebody about three years ago sent me the Sugata Mitra video. Uh, about the Hole in the Wall project. I don't know whether any of you have seen it. And I went, wow, this is great. You know, this, this is it. I can get the kids you know, back into the computer class, and I can get the computers to teach them. You know, it's really easy. But I came back, and I noticed mm, it's not going as, as well as I expected. It's sort of stalled a bit, because the teachers have peaked, and the kids are really wanting to stretch. And you could see it. You could see it in the classrooms. So I, you know, I don't know what to do. So the only thing, uh, you know, I'm, I look around. The kids are doing well. Uh, oh, in fact, uh, one anecdote I have to tell you where uh, when we tested the kids at the American Academy, the kids were doing well. And my measure of how well they were doing at that stage was I was up at a festival one time. There's an annual festival in the, in the valley. And all the kids, they take out their plastic AK-47s and shoot plastic bullets at the girls. It's kind of a local mating ritual up there. And this year, I walk up to the classroom, and this young boy points his plastic AK at me and says in perfect English, give me your money. <laughs> so I thought, well, OK, that part's pretty good. I won't worry about the other bit. I'm just doing grammar here. I'm just doing the grammar. So I thought, oh, you know, what am I going to do here? And I thought, I know, you know, I'm an, I'm an ex-journalist, an old hack. Why don't I start a newspaper? Let's make a newspaper. So, you know, I ratted around, found a template, you know, bought a template, registered the name, you know, and decided that the kids are just going to write a sentence and two sentences just to work on their grammar. And this is all it was going to be. It's just a grammar exercise to get them, to get them moving into it. So suddenly we have, ladies and gentlemen, the Pankisi Times in English. Now, it's very interesting because suddenly it's taking on its own life here. Because I noticed the first writings that came up 
were very interesting, and you can probably see them a little bit more clearly. What started what, up there, because it's a very cut-off area, it's an a, a, it's a isolated area in a way. So the first stuff that started coming in was this. And this is not a child speaking. This is a child repeating what their adult population tells them to. It's a direct repeat. All I did was correct a few grammar and spelling mistakes and then posted it. And so I went, okay, let's give us more, have some more. You know, I'd be Skyping, you know, all of this, by the way, was happening online. I would speak to the kids, you know, from Sydney, from London, from Paris and Warsaw. You know, we'd Skype once a week and on Saturday they would send me their articles and I'd do a bit of correction and say, okay, you know, you, a bit of spelling there, you're having trouble with the plurals, you know, here's a, here's a link for plurals. You know, uh, that's, that's the only instruction I was giving. This is just their stuff that they were giving me. So then they started, I, this started popping up. You know, they started to express themselves. They were beginning to express what they were thinking and what their friends were thinking and they were, they were talking about themselves. And these are corrected by me marginally. Uh, the, some of them have spelling mistakes and that in it because I leave a lot of stuff in there to keep their own voice because if you correct it too much, you lose the voice. So we end up with that. And uh, one girl even wrote about climate change. So suddenly, I've got the kids going from the early stuff and they've gone beyond the valley and they've gone into the global world and they're talking about global issues at the age of 14. So. That's cool. And I think this is really, really brilliant because I'm just doing grammar. They're, they're leading me. I've got nothing to do with what they write about. Everything they write, I post. So I'm up in the valley. Uh, no, it was, it was actually not there. I was online. I, I, was, I was talking to them online. My mistake. I said, hey, if there's anyone interesting comes to the valley, why don't you just interview them? If anyone interesting comes to the valley, why don't you just ask them a few questions? And lo and behold, about a couple of weeks ago, um, the new MP from Ahmeta passed through. And three of the girls, or four of them, I don't know how many, basically got to him and asked him a few questions. Yeah, and this is what they posted to me. It's word for word what they posted with a couple of grammar alterations. And I found this really interesting, if you can read it, because if you look what... Hedy's questions are, they're like, what are you planning to do in the near future? Well, we're going to build roads, new ditches, you will have internet access, and you will have gas. And then she goes, when will we have internet access? Oh, yeah, well, as soon as I go to Tbilisi, I'll meet the director of blah, blah. And then she comes back with another question. As, you know, we heard that the internet will be available in the new year, but it didn't happen. We want to know why you don't have the internet. <laughs> so, you know, that question is stronger than most of the journalists I've seen in this town who tend to walk up to an MP and ask him, what have you got to say to a grateful nation? So, yeah, this is, is a serious stuff we're getting here. And I went, wow, this is great. So, a couple, about, uh, yeah, exactly two weeks ago, I'm back up in the valley. You know, there's, there's the, there, there it is on our exclusive front page. Uh, also, we have an interview with the Minister of Sport and Youth, uh, Youth Affairs, you know, if you care to read it and what he's got to say. Uh, won't go into that, there's another story there <laughs> that bears going into. So I'm up in the valley uh, last Saturday with a, an old friend, Roy Southworth, uh, who took these photographs, by the way. And, um, I, and I went, I'm just recapping, I'm going, great, this is great. And they're talking to me and we're, we're, we're discussing things about what's next. And uh, they, I said, hmm. Now, what do we do now? Suddenly, I'm getting into it. So, you know what we're going to do? That interview, we're going to send it to the minister. We're going to send it to the MP and get him to read it in English. And then he goes global. And let's see what surprise he gets when he reads his quote back to him in English. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe nothing. But why not? It's their, it's their newspaper. It's not mine. So there we go. You know, we're coming out of the classroom. And as Roy and I were driving around, 
we noticed, you see, when I first went up there, we'd get all of this um, uh, graffiti, sm small graffiti that was consisted mainly of a couple of crossed AK AK-47s with a bit of jihadist literature on it. And we're driving around, and now they're writing this. Uh, I, I, I'm, not I'm not glorifying graffiti work, by the way, so you know, anyone's got a problem with that, don't take it up with me. So, uh, also, ah, in the classroom back that day, I asked them, say, hey, is there anything you need, anything you want? And I don't know which one of them said it. They said, yeah, can we have a press card, please? They wanted an accreditation. So, there we are, where, where we got to. And now, that's where we're at now. That's where we are this week. But then I'm starting to think, where do we go with this? Or where do they go with it, is what I should be saying. Now, this Pankisi Times cost nothing. It cost a template and uh, a, an online registration. And they're doing it. And, you know, I pay the journalists exactly what Ariana Huffington uh, charges for the Huffington Post. They get nothing. They're not paid at all. So, you know, there were no f white four-wheel drives used in this process. Think about that one, some of you. This is done by the people and the kids, with us just giving a little bit of backup. You know, we travel by Mashutka. That's it. And they're local teachers and local kids. That's all it is. So, Roy, my old china plate, says, hey, how do I get one of these? I said, well, Roy, what you do is you just get a template, get, a, get a, uh, um, an online registration, because Roy has a, um, uh, a, a, a small NGO in Emereti, in a part of Georgia. I wonder if we can find the map. There we are. Uh, he's in Emereti. He's got uh, some lessons going in Georgia. Great. So just get a template, get the kids to write, let it run, and use Shugata Mitra's granny cloud, if any of you know what that means. You just give them encouragement and correct it once a week. So someone else came up to me last week and said, Brad, can I have one in Tbilisi? Great, we, let's do it, same thing. And what I'd like to do is have the Pankisi Times share with the Emirati Journal or the Emirati Post or the Tbilisi Courier, and they can talk to each other. They can you know, share, they can post each other's stuff if they like, no problem. So now, we've got journalists, not students. Now, this could go further. We can take this further. There are areas of Georgia that have minorities with problems and issues, you know, down in Akhaltsiki and Marnuli with the um, Azeri minorities in Marnuli and the um, uh, Armenian minorities in Akhaltsiki. Now, there's, there's always cultural tension in these places. Now, the one thing they have in common that's really positive, they all like English. So why not set up an Akhaltsiki Times? Why not set up a Marnuli Post? And then have them share and have them talk to each other. And they talk to each other, not us, not the adults, because we don't have any boxes to tick. This is just going on its own. Uh, someone mentioned the other day that uh, um, someone wants to set one up in Kazakhstan. Why not let the kids talk from Kazakhstan? Because what you end up with is a bunch of children who talk to each other. And Fleur was talking about conflict resolution uh, in the previous thing. We, we had a, a talk about conflict resolution. Now, adults do conflict resolution. Kids can do conflict avoidance. And you know what? That's cheaper. So why don't we just let the kids get on with it, let them post and let their thoughts and let their stuff go out, and that's it. It's that simple. You can start with locally the Pankisi Times, today the Pankisi Times, tomorrow the world. It's all theirs, not ours. Thank you. Thank you, but I would like to acknowledge that I'm just the presenter on this. The newspaper doesn't belong to me. It's theirs. That's what, that was the other graffiti that I forgot to show you. This is what's on the walls now. So I'd actually like to acknowledge four of the young journalists who are here in the audience somewhere.
I've got a couple of young, there they are. Yeah. It's, it's their newspaper, not mine. Stand up. <laughs> 